the last shot of Force Awakens, you're obviously handing the saber to uh, to Mark Hamill, yeah. Luke Skywalker. And I'm curious, when you picked that shot back up for The Last Jedi, yes. talk about the continuity, having to recreate that. How much long, how, how long after did you shoot that? Over a up? year. Wow. Yeah. And the first time, I was very sick. I'm not sure if you've heard this story, yeah. but I was like genuinely vomiting in a tent when we were like getting the shot ready and everything. Um, and so I was like, <laughs> like uh, a bit dazed and out of it. Um, so picking it up anyway was so odd because that, you know, when you're poorly and time is like a bit odd. Mm. Um, so I couldn't quite remember what we had done. And also, yes, yeah, so much had, so much time had gone by. But also I think we picked it up before the first one had come out. So it was, it was really, it was, yeah, it was difficult. Wow, and then yeah. did, you, did you find yourself wanting to look exactly the same continuity-wise, the hair placement, the way you stood? 100%, <sighs> but it is funny too, just, it, it's more, and it, and it was more the feeling of it, because the first time around, there was so much feeling in it, but then you don't know what's gonna be picked, and Mark said, you know, he gave such a range of things that it's hard to know what was picked, because we hadn't seen the, the finished product yet. Mm. Um, so sort of trying to recreate that feeling for an extended moment. And then as opposed to the end, it was the beginning. It's a whole mm. it's a whole thing. And there's so many fan theories, and I'm not gonna sit here and ask you who Ray's parents are. I know you get that question all the time, but I'm genuinely curious though, at the beginning of Force Awakens, so you and John Boyega are both uh, British actors. You yeah. have British accents. John went to an American accent Amazing. in the film. You went to, you kept your British accent. Yeah. Do you talk about, was there a decision there? Is it a character choice while you have a British accent? Because there's theories about who, the, who your parents might be if you have a British accent. Firstly, John's American accent is fantastic. It's insane. And yeah. mine, uh, uh, I think <laughs> it could have been distracting. Huh. If I was like, hey, heart so low. <laughs> and you know, did an awful American accent. Um, I didn't decide that, no. So maybe the, the, I'm sure there's a reason. I'm sure there's a reason. Well, I can't wait to find out. Yeah. Now, one of my favorite scenes in, in The Force Awakens was uh, the scene when you did the Jedi mind trick on Daniel Craig's Stormtrooper character. Yes. I, I, we've heard Daniel Craig's version of that story. What happened on that day for you? What did was you... Daniel Craig's version? Well, just he told it on, on the on the air that he was in that he was actually in the Stormtrooper oh, costume. Oh, he was sweating too. Did you, so did, how, how, did, how did that all go down? Did you know he was gonna be in that suit when you yeah. filmed that scene? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because, you know, we because the, the, the helmet's really heavy and hot, so we had, we had done blocking and everything with him out of the helmet. And I was like, this is hilarious. <laughs> it was easier when he had the helmet on, because I'm like, ah, oh, then it's a stormtrooper. And otherwise I was like, it, 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 it's James Bond. <laughs> Does he actually speak during those scenes? And, yeah. and then, is it just his normal voice and then they change it digitally in post? No, it was his normal voice. He was doing the thing, he was doing the line. And then um, in post, I think because of the muffling anyway, they would have had to. ADR it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, one, <clears throat> excuse me, one thing I find interesting, obviously the Carrie Fisher element of this film is incredible, the emotional connection to it. I cannot wait mm. to see how Ryan handles the character. I'm just wondering, do you have a particular favorite memory of her on or off set that maybe just stays with you of something that you just look back on and go, gosh, I, I really love that moment with Carrie? Um, I think when they released the behind the scenes thing for The Force Awakens and there was a clip of me and her dancing, when I saw uh, I can't remember where it was, or if I was just told about it, but when, uh, in this one, there's a thing of us singing. And mm. so it was just not, it, like that's the nice thing is between all of it, and we were just playing around. Yeah, so. all right, and I got you. And the slate face, uh, Kevin McCarthy of Washington, D.C. gave a two shot. Um, well, first of all, congratulations to you. Uh, and I'm Thank very you. curious about the last shot of The Force Awakens that JJ shot, yeah. and then you picking that back up exactly, getting the exact <laughs> continuity, the exact lighting. How did you, was it hard to get that exact lighting and continuity down from the last TFA shot? I mean, it was impossible because we were shooting on Skellig Michael, which is a this island that we could only get to for a few days. And to be truth, um, to be truthful, you know, the, they had overcast and it was, the sun was blazing over <laughs> there, so. Wow. We did the best that we could, but um, you know, I think the emotion of the moment carrying through and figuring out what is the next thing that happens. I know for me, that's why there's no time gap between the two movies is I wanted to see what happens next with that lightsaber being held totally. out. You know? Now, I know you were on Kimmel last night and I asked JJ the same question when they did Force Awakens. Yeah. Uh, the first word was revealed, which was this. And then yeah. I asked him what the second word was, which was this is. Uh, now for your movie, it's were is the first word. We're. We're, like we're. We're. Like, we're. Yeah. What is the second word? So I've said this, but so I can say this, not. Not. Yeah, we're going dark. <laughs> we're going super dark. It's not, it's not we're, we're happy, it's we're not. We're not. Yes. Um, you know, obviously one thing I love about this, the footage I've seen so far, it just looks incredible, but uh, red is a big theme to this film. And yeah. uh, I'm curious about the color of red, what you want to portray with it. Obviously red is a very dark tone. Mm. We're talking about the color of red using it as a leading character. 
Yeah, during the design of it, it just started coming to the forefront. And there's a couple big sequences where red plays a really big part. I love the feel of it. I love how it's vibrant, it's alive, it feels kind of dangerous, and there's just something about it that felt right for this movie. Now, 35 millimeter, 65 millimeter, I love mm -hmm. that Star Wars is still shooting on that, which is amazing. Yeah. Uh, what scene, I know in Force Awakens, it opened up during the Millennium Falcon scene when, right, right, when right. they fly for the first time. Uh, is there a particular scene we're going to see in full 65 millimeter, 70 millimeter IMAX? We did a couple, of, I mean, I don't want to, I can't say without giving anything away, but we, uh, we did a couple of, like, the it, it, some of the stuff in Ireland, we, we brought the IMAX cameras out there and were able to get some like big establishers and a couple other like big impact shots with it. So mm -hmm. yeah. And my favorite thing was the behind the scenes footage really they released for the movie and yeah. just seeing Carrie Fisher. I was just curious without like getting to specific storyline details. Do you remember the first day you yelled action for one of her scenes? Oh, for Carrie! Oh my goodness. Ah, uh, you know what? I, I, I don't remember the first day of shooting. What I remember is before, the first day I hung out with her, which was way before the shoot, and went over to her house, sat on her bed for like four hours with her, and just made jokes and like bad puns and just talked about and gossiped and talked about stuff. She was, and she was the force of nature, man. She yeah. was singular. Yeah. Now, one of the things I love about uh, behind the scenes of these movies is that there was a different name on set. I remember the chair yeah. said Space Bear. Space Bear. Is that something you created yeah. for the set? Like, what, can I ask what the significance of that was? Yeah, it was during prep where they're like, we need a code name. And we had been, I forget what it was. We were like talking about like, we got into this, I got into some corner where I didn't know how their heroes would get out of it. I'm like, and then a space bear comes in and kills everybody or something. And so we <laughs> said, can we make it space bear? And then we, Rick Heinrichs, our production designer, designed this dumb little panda in a <laughs> in a space helmet, and it just made me happy that on this big official production, there was Space Bear on it. That's awesome. <laughs> Made me happy. Well, I'm super fascinated by how movie titles are when you're shooting them. I think this was called Space Bear when you guys were shooting the film. I saw some behind the scenes footage of you sitting in a chair that said Space Bear. Yeah. Is that what the script says as well? No. No, did the script say Space no, Bear? No, but it is very much a more accurate theme of the film. Right. Not only did it say Space Bear. bears are a big part of it. But we all, had a, we all had bear names. Oh. Like a bear, yeah. So like, what's, what's Poe's bear name? Poe's was a Smokey Bear. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and Laura, your character? Did you have a bear? No, I had a bear. I don't even remember. <laughs> uh, Don Donald was Paddington Bear. <laughs> uh, That's awesome. I think Adam was Grizzly Bear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What about Boyega? Did he have one? What was his? I don't remember. This is great. It better, it better not have been Brown Bear. I mean, it needed to be something. Uh, <laughs> I need to see this movie. Mine was Latino Bear. Oh, okay, okay. I, I want to see Space Bear now. Now, I was, I, one thing I've been watching you, or Jurassic Park is one of my favorite movies of all time, and Spielberg was one of those filmmakers who would combine practical and CGI masterfully, and Ryan does the exact same thing here, where you have these real-life creatures on set doing things. I'm curious, can you compare and contrast what you saw on, this, on the Spielberg set at Jurassic Park, where you have this 10,000-pound T-Rex, and then here, where you have actual things that are working? Yeah, well, it, that was the first CGI movie, Jurassic Park, so it was really a set of invention. Mm. And the ILM was there literally figuring out the technology and how we were going to do it, Stan and Dennis Murin. And so it was extraordinary, but literally people were saying, well, maybe if you look, we'll put an X in the tree, and if you look up, it will kind of look as though you're seeing something, and then we'll, we can paint it onto the, it was, you know, <laughs> radical. So here we are in this refined era mm. of everything at your fingertips, and instead of, um, using it and relying on it as a storyteller, he focuses on the people. Yeah. And everything is at such an extraordinary level in mm. terms of effects that it does blend beautifully. But I think the intimacy that he stays focused on in the story allows everything to be extraordinary, but also um, the environment, not the story. Hmm, interesting. And, and that's where I think he and Steven are very similar as filmmakers, because to them it's about the storytelling, not about yeah. the effects. Now there's a great moment in the behind the scenes footage, and it brought tears to my eyes, and it, you're hugging Carrie Fisher, and you kind of give her a kiss. It's one of my, I just, I love that moment so much. I'm just wondering, what was happening on that day? Were you, were you uh, do you remember this specific moment? Well, yeah, there was, that, that was kind of the area in front of the trailers, whenever you would drive in, then all the trailers are back there, and then you had the AD trailers in front, and they had a ping pong table where we were constantly paying I was constantly beating Adam at ping pong at that <laughs> table, and uh, and then we would uh, yeah, and then I, I you know every that's where we'd kind of all pass by each other. It was kind of like the water cooler area, and yeah, whenever I would see 
Carrie and Billy on the goat, you know, on their little golf cart. And she'd always have a Coke with her, and I'd come over and, you know, bug her and <laughs> kiss her. We would sing or do, yeah, all sorts of stuff there. So that was, that was, that was just. A lot of days were like yeah, that. You it's know? a beautiful moment. Yeah. And I'm wondering, I don't know how much you can give away about this, but I'm curious about your character's hair. It's fascinating. And I, I don't know if it's purple or pink. I'm just trying to figure out the color of it. But is there a storyline to why she has that particular hairstyle? I think, I don't know much about your character yet. So I'm. I'm yes. I, I think. Um, Poe dyes her hair in the movie. Oh, yeah. I know that. I mean, There's Ryan already told me. I was to say. Yeah, yeah, dude, come on, man. Kathleen, Kathleen Kennedy's going to come in here and, like, kill God, us all. God, Oscar. <laughs> have they not taught you? <laughs> but seriously, um, is there a reason for the hair? Story I think line? there is. I think hmm. that it, uh, it, it speaks to who she is. Um, you know, not directly, but it is very fitting. Her entire look is very fitting. I'm excited. To who she is. And it's just such good. A cool hair color. It is. It's an awesome. <laughs> if you're going to be in Star Wars, have that color hair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I agree. I think that's how the conversation started. Yeah, well, I can't wait to see Poe die in the movie. Well, nice it's, to see it's you guys. my favorite scene. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> you know, uh, one thing I love about the, for, the Force Awakens is that scene when you're fighting with Luke's saber. And I'm just mm -hmm. curious, like now that we can talk about the Force Awakens, that mm -hmm. that moment shooting that scene, what it felt like to have Luke's saber in your hand fighting. How, how, what did that think, feel like for you as an I actor? Think with Finn specifically, is fun because he actually gets to do so much stuff. He gets to have a nice, cool blaster. He gets to use the lightsaber. I guess be in a stormtrooper pursuit, and I just feel like I just get the best of, of, of all worlds in this experience. Get to be at the gunner point on the Falcon, and it's just, you know, yeah, it's fun. It's fun to have all those different things to do. When you're shooting those scenes in the gunner point of the Falcon, though, mm -hmm. just like how does it look on set? Is it all green screen around you? Because like, it's so, it's so cool. funny. I mean, you're actually in the, the gunner position, it spins and all that kind of stuff. When you're looking out, there's a camera, and like just guys behind it like this. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just there having to, you know, use your imagination. But there's a nostalgia to it as well. There's lights, there's, there's smoke, there's, there's action. You know, you just imagine, you just become a child. Now, one thing I found interesting, and there's a lot of fan theories online about who Ray's parents are, and I think it's interesting to look at the accents that some of the actors have in these films. <laughs> you and Daisy are both British actors. Mm -hmm. You went American for the movie. Mm -hmm. She kept her British accent, which is an interesting thing to think about, because I wonder who her parents might be. But uh. I'm curious, when you initially got the role, was, was, the, was the American accent part of the character? Was that your decision? Did JJ want you to be an American accent? I think, in general, that's something that came from up top, that they would try to do it as, as British and to do him as American. Mm. Um, but, I, but I think that also broadens the amount of actors that you can see for an audition. Um, but I don't think that those two worlds mesh into the narrative because mm. to act means to, to, to be somebody else, not yourself. Sure. So. I just, it's just interesting because yeah. Obi Wan was had a I don't, I, I think the fans should move on from that one, guys. Yeah. Trust me, I've got your back. Move right. on from that one. <laughs> but one that I told you to be specific about, I let you know. Now I'm a huge Attack of the Block fan. Brilliant film, uh, great movie. I'm wondering, just that particular set versus a Star Wars set. I know the budget's obviously more extreme, but yeah. can you talk about what that movie taught you about being an actor and what you still utilize from Attack the Block that, on, on a movie like this? I think it was just my first. It was my first film, um, and, and it definitely reminds me of, of, of staying appreciative as. You know, sometimes when you get into this position, they, they feel like the only emotion you have access to is, is being thankful and, and gracious, and you're still a human being, and, and, and thinking to my experiences on Attack the Block, it gives me some form of, of, of comfort in how far I've come. So, yeah, I've, I, I learned a lot on that experience. And last question, the sabers on set, they're actually physically yeah. there. Heavy. Talk, now, is it lighting up? Because your faces illuminate. Can you oh, talk yeah. about how, what those feel like? I remember JJ showed me a photo of what it looked like mm -hmm. on set. I know they add digital effects to it, but what mm -hmm. does it look like when you're holding it? Well, Dan Mindel, who's a, a genius when it comes to lighting, lighting the actors, uh, he knows exactly what to do. And, and anytime you can use a prop, to make sure the audience uh, reads the, the characters and to also give the, the scenery a dramatic effect is, is, is the best you can do. And those lights, it just, it represents something to us. We see the blue, we know what's going on. We see the red, we know what time it is. And yeah. I like that. Uh, well, first of all, congratulations to you. Um, you. I know you can't really say a lot, but I'm yeah. curious what you can tell me about your character. I know it's kind of a, uh, a cliche question to ask, but what can yeah. you tell me about your character so far? Um, so my character's name is Rose Tico. She's part of the Resistance. She also has a sister named Paige, who's part of the Resistance. Um, Paige is a gunner, so she trains with Poe and fights with Poe a lot. Um, and Rose is a maintenance worker. She works behind pipes all day. She's someone who's in the background and someone who isn't necessarily on the in the forefront of the action. Mm. Uh, but in this film, you'll see her get pulled into that. I'm geeking out. I can't wait. And I, I know. I, I do. I, now, have you seen the film? I just saw it last night. What I mean, with the like whole cast? <laughs> can you give me a reaction? Oh my god! I mean. I'm still so shocked by the whole thing. It's very weird to watch yourself yeah. on a screen like that. 
Um, but watching everyone else, like Daisy and and Mark and Adam and John and Gwen and Laura and Oscar, every single person is phenomenal in this movie. Andy Serkis is great in it. Every character Love has something Andy they're Serkis. dealing with. It's just like incredible. I know, I introduced myself to him. <laughs> and I was like, this is such a big moment. Because <laughs> I love everything he does. I'm such Gollum. A- I love Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Me too. Why are we best friends? I know! <laughs> I feel like, I, like we have the same things in common. Now, I do want to ask you, um, yeah. I don't know if you can go into specifics. What was the first day on set for you? Yeah. Um, do you remember, can you give me like an idea of what you shot, maybe? Yeah. I actually think I can tell you this, because it was in the trailer. Oh. Or not in the trailer. It was in like one of those back... Like, yeah, the behind-the-scenes the behind footage. Videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was that scene. There's a scene with me and Oscar and John. Um... I remember walking onto that set. First of all, I remember being in my like costume and in my makeup and just being like, this is so weird. <laughs> and I was quiet and I remember feeling like I was about to um, play in the Super Bowl. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like your your sentence are so heightened. Like everything is just like, like you're an animal and suddenly you're gonna be chased by a wolf or something and everything is so heightened and you just wanna like experience everything and you're just like looking around. And, and I remember walking onto that set and seeing Finn and seeing Poe and just mm. being like, I I don't get what's happening. <laughs> you yeah. know, uh, one thing about, I love about Star Wars films, well, one, yeah. that they shoot on film, which is amazing, yes. 35 and 65, but yeah. also the idea that uh, Ryan and JJ uh, use a lot of practical effects and things mm. on set. Mm. I'm just curious, was, was there something particularly that you nerded out about, like seeing practically, like was it a poured, or like, well, like what, what were the things that you were seeing on set that you were um, geeking out about? I mean, I love the porks. Yeah, everyone loves the porks. I also love, um, the crystal foxes? Yes, that thing is so cool looking. It's beautiful. Was it real on set? They had it, was it They practical? had models of it, yeah, oh, which was incredible. I mean, the creatures department on this film is incredible. And there are other creatures too that I don't know that we can discuss now, but you'll see in the movie, they're just a lot, like you said, you're walking onto these sets and there are these creatures that are being controlled by people. And yeah. so they're actually moving and you're actually interacting with them. I can tell you in particular that I had this moment with one of the creatures in the movie and I full on like cried when they weren't covering me. Like they were like <laughs> covering the other thing and I was like, oh my God, I'm crying because they're so real. Yeah, did do for the day. Dude, they have, a, they have an R2-D2 one, they have, a, they have a Vader one now. This is the old model version of it, but uh, I just saw Hamill in the hall. I was like, he's like, that's a good way to get out of jury duty to wear that. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, um, I have a question I've been wanting to ask you since The Force Awakens. Um, when you do the scenes with Kylo Ren and you're looking up at Snoke as the hologram, are you physically on set doing your motion capture? So where, are you on a huge yeah, chair? How does that look? Yeah, I was on look? a 25 foot um, kind of throne thing, wasn't I? When we were yeah. when we shot The Force Awakens. Yeah. It was quite weird, because it was very bizarre being separated from your fellow actors who were down there so far away. It was like doing some kind of, weird piece of site-specific theatre, wasn't it? It was sort of cool. It was, but it was amazing because they also had your voice coming through a speaker. Yeah, right. Because you were so, because really? you didn't want to have to shout because that would lose some power or whatever. You were still able to talk very quietly, but the voice was booming. And it was like, this is proper. It was really amazing. It was really amazing, That's actually. That's really, I really that. cool. cool. Now, one thing I love about your character, well, in the, in the initial one, we never, we don't see your face. But in the Vanity Fair piece, there's a great uh, picture of you holding the mask. We actually see your face uh, in, in the actual suit. I'm curious, are we going to get to see your face in this particular film? Is that something they're going to keep um, in, the, in the mask? If I were to answer that question, I'd have to kidnap you. That's OK. And everyone else in this room. That's and okay. I don't have enough space. OK, OK. Well, you just, take, just take me. <laughs> it's fine. My wife will be fine with it. I'll just, just take me. No, but I am curious, though, about like doing the voice work in that, in that suit. Do you have to project differently? Is it, are, we, are you actually delivering the dialogue as we're hearing it in the film, or do you have to redo it in ADR? No, I, it is delivered there and then. And there's something very interesting about the real practicalities of someone choosing to dress in that way and therefore how it would affect your how it would affect your voice. And also leading troops, you you know, you're not having a sort of casual conversation. So it does change the dynamic. When you're in a huge room as well, you know, this there's something about having to communicate commands, which right. is interesting. Now you have an amazing scene uh, in The Force Awakens specifically, which I can talk about because that movie's been out for a couple of years now, but where you're delivering that speech to the crowd of stormtroopers, yeah. and it's, it's, an, it's an amazing scene. And I'm wondering, when you do a scene that deeply, he's just a mean person, it seems like, at times. I'm curious, like, do you find yourself, like, when the camera cuts, is it hard to go back? Because you're, like, the nicest guy on the planet. 
Uh, thanks. Uh, <laughs> um, no, it was exciting. I think he's excited. I think he's scared of anything that's different, you know? Yeah. Like, so he just wants to get rid of it so that the, world, like, so that the galaxy makes more sense. Like, I think all those things, you just have to find the reason that he's like that, you know? Hmm. And he's also fighting for his position in things, you know? Yeah. Uh, like, he's a young enough for his position, so I think he's just desperately trying to hang on to it. So, no, it was easy to get there, and that was JJ, and he was just really good about getting different sizes of it and going smaller and bigger and then deciding later. It was re but also, they had so many stormtroopers there, yeah. you really felt like you had to get it out there. It was amazing. Now, we don't know the actual size of Snoke yet. We've seen him in that hologram. Um, well, have you not seen the toy? I've seen the toy, but that's the, that's the toy. Do we know how big he's going to be? He's like that big. <laughs> 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 but do we know his literal size yet? I mean, is that, is that given away with the toy? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. He's, 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 not, he's, not, he's not that big. He's actually about uh, seven or eight feet tall. Okay, or so nine. are you on stilts if, he, if he's walking? It's um, we we did actually shoot some versions with stilts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. We did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 